this is Mrs. Elf Frog. Thank you for tuning into my YouTube channel. I have determined to do a series on the narcissistic pastor. This series is going to be based mostly on my personal experience. I might draw on some of the personal experiences of others. I'm also going to draw from some research I've done on narcissism and narcissism in the pulpit. I found a nifty list and I'm going to put a link on the side here in the information, but my list has 51 characteristics of a narcissist in the pulpit, so it might take me a little while to get through it. But here goes. Um, I have a couple definitions here of narcissism or narcissistic personality disorder. Um, the UK Dictionary of Psychology describes it as extremely selfish, or the personality is someone who's extremely selfish, self-centered. People with a narcissistic personality have a grandiose view of their uniqueness, achievements, and talents, and an insatiable craving for admiration and approval from others. They are arrogant, exploitative, to achieve their own goals, and expect much more from others than they themselves are willing to give. Now that so clearly meets the definition of a narcissist or the narcissist that I've known and the narcissist in the pulpit that um, that's going to be our running definition. I have another one and it says narcissistic personality disorder in which a person has a grandiose self-importance preoccupation preoccupation with fantasies of unlimited success, a driven desire for attention and admiration, an intolerance for criticism, <laughs> that one is key, and disturbed self-centered interpersonal relations. They are often referred to as being conceited. They generally have a low self-esteem as well. They act selfish interpersonally with a sense of entitlement. The thing is that the more you look into um, NPD, the more you'll find out that these really are people that while they need to be watched closely and they need to be kept at bay, are people who need to be pitied and need our prayers. Um, the narcissist is addicted to their narcissistic supply and they're always looking for a constant stream of this and a resource for a stream of these things. This is the narcissistic supply, admiration, adoration, approval, attention, so on. So, one thing that you need to understand about the narcissist is that they are generally not conscious of their delusional ideas and manipulative actions. They truly believe that they are called by God, hear from God, and have a superior relationship to God compared to you and everyone else in the world. And only God can possibly understand who he is and the high calling on his life. I'm going to provide a link for that. So the first on my list is self-centeredness. His needs are paramount and take precedence over everything. Now, my personal experience with dealing with a self-centered, narcissistic pastor um, can kind of relate to even just church services. I've been in services where large chunks of the service was devoted to what the pastors were going through. You know, the pastors are suffering through this, the pastors are dealing with this, the pastors have lost sheep all over the place. Oh, the poor pastors who dedicate so much time and so much of their life to what God should have been the one calling them to do, but really look for pity and look for attention um, and really look to keep the church and the congregation pastor focused. I even saw this in um, what was the intercessors. They had a group of people who were called to pray and knew that they were called by God to pray. But the pastors would keep the intercessors pastor focused. And it was kind of disturbing. They would even make them feel guilty, like if the pastor was sick, if they were having financial difficulty, or anything like that. And uh, you couldn't call them on any 
contradictions. If, if the pastor were to say, you know, if you're having financial problems, it's because you've made bad decisions. And, you know, the church is having financial problems. Is that because you've made bad decisions? Um, those weren't the kind of things that, that you could ask them that that's probably going to fall into another characteristic. But, um, the, you know, the intercessors were to be praying for the church and praying for the pastors most of all. Um, a, another characteristic, number two, is no remorse. They have no remorse for mistakes or misdeed and will not offer heartfelt apologies or ask for forgiveness. Like I said, I'm going to try to draw from my personal experience. Um, that I had an example of this where um, I was, we were told to do things a particular way. Um, there was a group of ladies and in the ladies meeting they said, you know, you gotta watch each other's back, you've gotta call each other on your things and, you know, if the poor pastor, who was, it was a male and female team at our church, um, didn't feel like having the meeting, somebody should step up and do it. Well, this wasn't happening, and so because we were told to call each other on these things, I made a point to step up, and I sent an email to every lady whose email address I had and said, we're not doing what we said we were going to do. Well, that was the cause for a serious set-down. I had to have a sit-down in the office and be made to feel absolutely guilty, made to feel absolutely guilty for doing exactly what I was told to do. So not only was there no remorse, you know, for not doing what we were supposed to be doing. But I was also made to feel guilty for even saying anything about it. Um, and that was disturbing, but really set me so, like, keeling off guard, you know, just somewhere out there in the universe, right, just set me spinning. And I didn't know what to do with this. Um, and so it actually... Um, the way that it happened, it ended up making me feel more dependent on my pastors because obviously my judgment was lacking somewhere. So number three is unreliable and undependable. Wow, did we just talk about that? <laughs> will change his mind and reverse decisions at will. Well, <clears throat> when it comes to being unreliable and undependable, there was one thing that um, kind of goes back to the being self-centered too, is that um, there was a whole lecture given, this was just before we left, on their having lost sheep all over this city, that there were just lost, bang, bleeding sheep walking all over the city who weren't with, who were without their true pastor at that church that we were attending, or really it was a cult, but church, I'll, I'll be kind for right now and call it a church. Um, and so, like I said, it was a male and female team, it was a pastor and the pastor's wife, and she's giving this lecture on how there's lost sheep all over the city and says, um, now Sunday, I'm going to deliver the sermon. I'm going to be the one in the pulpit and I'm going to be the one to give the message on Sunday. So you guys show up for it. Well, I was on my way out the door. And so I said, okay, if they have a reason to keep me here, you know, in this message, if, if they can convince me with the word that there is a true reason for me to stay at this church, I'll come and hear them out, and then I'm gone. And I then come Sunday, there was no message. There was no sermon. It didn't happen. So, um, say hi. So, I felt completely released to go because, you know, obviously if she says, I'm going to be there, I'm going to do this, and doesn't do it, then it was a lie, and that was an example of them changing their mind at will. You know, just, oh, I'm going to do this, this is so important, this is what needs to be done, and I'm going to take care of it. But when it came down to it, there was absolutely no taking care of it. Let me see how I'm doing on time here. <clears throat>